Welcome to Stress 101, a presentation of the Stress Management Clinic of Northwestern University Counseling and Psychological Services. The Stress Management Clinic serves as a resource for students who are experiencing problems such as anxiety, concentration difficulties, procrastination, or other forms of distress which arise in connection with personal or academic stressors. The Stress Clinic provides opportunities for students to identify physical, emotional, or other symptoms that are indicative of stress. Students then receive training in skills and techniques that will aid them in managing stress in their lives. Our goal in this brief introduction is to aid you in identifying some of the more common signs and symptoms of stress. And following this, to make some connections regarding the role that our perceptions, thoughts, and beliefs play in our experience of stress. Our final objective is to acquaint you with some strategies and techniques for coping with stress. One useful definition of stress views it as any situation, whether real or imagined, that threatens our emotional status quo. A stressful situation appears to place a demand upon the individual to take some action in order to restore a sense of emotional equilibrium. It's important to remember that stress arises in response to both negative and positive events in our lives, particularly those involving change. So even though you may be understandably happy about going to college, graduating, starting a new relationship or finding a job, these events may require a lot of adjustments and thereby generate some degree of stress in your life. Stress may manifest itself in several ways, physical, emotional, cognitive, and behavioral. Let's take a closer look at some common features. Some of the more common physical stress symptoms include muscle tension, headaches, stomach problems including nausea, constipation, or diarrhea, sleep difficulty that may result in insomnia or in frequent awakening during the night, appetite disturbance in the form of overeating or eating very little, rapid breathing, racing heartbeat, and sweating are also common features. Emotional stress symptoms may take the form of feeling overwhelmed, agitated, irritable, and tearful. Chronic or prolonged stress may also put an individual at greater risk for depression. Cognitive stress symptoms include increased worrying, decreased concentration, impatience, forgetfulness, confusion, a negative or pessimistic outlook, and procrastination. When we encounter a stressful situation, our bodies undergo a rapid set of changes that enable us to address the situation. This response, called the fight-flight response, involves the release of two powerful hormones, adrenaline and cortisol, into the bloodstream. They, in turn, have an impact on practically every organ and system in the body. Our heart and respiration rates increase, fat and sugar are made available for increased energy, and non-emergency functions such as digestion and reproduction are suppressed. There is an adaptive value to being able to respond to a physical threat in this manner. The problem is that the kinds of threats that we encounter today are not likely to be the lions and tigers and bears that preyed upon our early ancestors, but rather things like deadlines, roommate conflicts, illnesses, and relationship problems. Prolonged or chronic stress has been found to be a factor in premature aging, weight gain, and a number of stress-related disorders such as allergies, migraines, eczema, hypertension, and even rheumatoid arthritis. A thing is neither good nor bad, but thinking makes it so. This quote from Shakespeare nicely illustrates the role that our perceptions play in our response to stress. It is signified to many down through the years that none of us views reality with 100% accuracy. Rather, we all view the world through our own particular filters or lenses. The lenses through which we view the world are shaped by the interaction of our biology and our experiences. Together, these two factors constitute our perspective, and to a great extent, we are all prisoners of our perspective which makes us vulnerable to errors in perception that contribute to stress. According to several cognitive theorists, how we view a situation, that is, our thoughts about the situation and the meaning that we ascribe to it, has everything to do with the degree to which the stress response is activated. Based on the pioneering work of Albert Ellis and Aaron Beck, David Burns identified several thinking errors that promote stress and anxiety. All or nothing thinking, that is looking at things in absolute black and white categories, overgeneralization, 
viewing a negative event as a never-ending pattern of defeat, mental filter, dwelling on the negatives and ignoring the positives in a situation, discounting the positives, insisting that your accomplishments or positive qualities really don't count, magnification or minimization, blowing things way out of proportion or shrinking their importance. Challenging distortions involves asking yourself some hard questions. Is this thought or belief true? Am I jumping to conclusions? What evidence do I actually have? Is there another way of viewing the situation? What would I tell a friend if they were in this situation? What's the worst that could happen if in fact this were true or accurate? Decide how to deal with the source of your stress. If the distortion is the root of the problem, you can recognize it and begin to let it go. If the problem is real, are there practical steps you can take to begin to cope with it? The relaxation response is the term coined by Dr. Herbert Benson to describe the inborn set of physiological changes that offset the fight-flight response. Activation of the relaxation response results in decreased oxygen consumption, muscle tension, heart rate, blood pressure, and respiration. The relaxation response can be brought about by deep breathing, prayer, repetitive exercise, focusing on an object, word, or phrase. Begin by sitting quietly in a comfortable position and closing your eyes. Focus your attention on your breathing. Breathe slowly and naturally. Count your outbreaths or your exhalations in groups of four. One, two, three, four, and then repeat the pattern. Assume a passive, non-judgmental, non-critical attitude about thoughts that come to mind. Don't worry about getting it right. Allow thoughts to float in and out of your awareness. Continue to count your exhalations for 10 to 20 minutes and try to practice on a daily basis. Finally, self-care is an important but often overlooked component of stress management. Engaging in pleasurable activities such as listening to music, spending time with friends, or exercising has multiple health benefits. Meditation and prayer are healthy ways of reestablishing balance and finding peace in times of stress and uncertainty. We hope that you found this introduction to the Stress Management Clinic helpful and invite you to return to our homepage to register or find out more information about our groups. Thank you.